It's our turn to blend our voices to sing together as we go into S, S, and S hymn book, Sacred Songs and Solos, number 533. That is going to be our first song. You are all welcome to the house of the Lord on this last Sunday of the first month of year 2019. We can all say, hitherto, the Lord has helped. Hitherto, the Lord has guided. Hitherto, the Lord has provided. Amen. We thank him for all he has done. Amen. We are here to meet with the Lord, and we know before we got here, he knew we were coming, yes. and he was waiting for us. We want to extend a similar warm welcome to all our internet audience, wherever you may be. We pray that the Lord who is with us here will bless you too. Amen. And if you are visiting or you live locally and you like to join us, you are very welcome. This is the Apostolic Faith Church, the Bexley branch, located on number 13, Pell Hill Road, DA53EP. Of course, you've missed out on the wonderful prelude that we had, beginning with the um, euphonium solo from Mike. Jelenke, actually, that young man came to me a while ago, and he was talking to me about, Uncle, how can we get more young people into the choir and orchestra? And I gave him that challenge. Two of us actually have that appointment, which is to pray for more young people. Amen. And I really felt when he finished, the way we all said amen, let us remember his own desire, too, is that he's not the only one. We have many other young people that Mike is waiting for, and we know the Lord is able to do that. Amen. Then we have the marvelous grace from the choir, and then the female choir that give us surely goodness and mercy. 533, let's take the first two verses only, verse 1 and verse 2, 533. Tenderly kind of Five. We're going to have that as a grand choir. We want the orchestra to join in the singing of this song about prayer. We just have the keyboard players to introduce and to um, give us the tune. Pray on, pray on, believe in one. The Lord will answer prayer. Amen. And that's what the Lord will do for you and for yes. me today. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. we're taking those three verses with faith in our heart that the Lord will surely answer our prayers.
Amen. Let's turn to some choruses from CGS, number 13, one, three, chorus number 13. Ask the Savior to help you, to comfort, to strengthen, and to keep you. He's willing to aid you. He will carry you through. That's a prayer, and the Lord will answer. Let's take it twice. Chorus prayer is the master key. Yeah. That is the key that we have been using since the beginning of this year. Yes. From the first day through to today, we have been using that key and it has been effective. Yeah. I can tell you that. I can testify to that. Just as I know that many people too have that testimonies yeah. in their heart. Prayer <laughs> is the key. take one more song before we have congregational prayer, and that's going to be from SSNS 555. Remember me, O oh mighty one. Today is going to be a day of the fulfillment of answer to this prayer. When storms around me are sweeping, when alone my watch I'm keeping, May fires of evil falling, may tempter's voices calling. Remember me, O oh mighty one. Amen. Remember me, O oh mighty one. Amen. We're going to stand up to sing those three verses, at the end of which, Brother Banji, we come forward to lead us in congregational prayer. All the three verses we will stand up to sing after the introduction from the orchestra, and then we have congregational prayer from Brother Benji.
thank you for bringing us here today. We just thank you that you've gathered us together in your sanctuary. And you have only one thing in mind, and that is to bless us. Oh, we are praying that anything that will hinder you from blessing us, that you will remove it this afternoon right now. We just want to be recipients of your blessing. Oh, Lord, my God, this service belongs to you. The rest of it we hand over to your total affairs. Oh, just take total control. As the word of God will come out. Oh, every problem we might have brought here, let the word of God be tailored to meet the particular size of that problem. Whatever the height of that mountain, whatever the lowest depth of that valley, no matter how crooked that situation may be, God Almighty, nothing stands before thee. It must make way. Move that mountain. Move that mountain. It doesn't matter how long it has been there. In this service as we've gathered here today, let this day be the expiry date. Give us testimonies. Today as the word comes out, save us. Sanctify us. Baptize us. Revive us. We just want to be more like you. We, we, We know we're not there yet. So many faults. So many mistakes, so many weaknesses, but we are working in progress. And we are praying that, Lord, you just take us, shape us, fashion us for something precious that you will put in heaven above. Thank you, Father. The preacher comes out, take control. A perfect anointing gift to him. Lord, we just want to see your will and your glory come down. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
we may be strangers living in this world of care. We are always looking for a city built upon. Oh yes, we are looking for a city built upon. Where we never die. We never die. No, never. taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 17. Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 17, we read from verses 14 to 21. Verse 14. When they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy upon my son. Amen. For he is lunatic and so vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. 18. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if any have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. 21 and the last verse, have it. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting.
met with great temptation. Did you think to pray? By love and merit, did you claim the Holy Spirit as your guide and stay? When your heart was filled with my brother, that you might forgive another who has crossed your way. Oh, oh pray, rest the weary, prayer will change the night today. Seems the country don't forget to pray. came upon you, did you think to pray, when your soul was bowed in sorrow, bam, of Gilead did you borrow, at the gate of Seems dark and dreary. Don't forget to pray. Don't forget to pray. May the Lord answer our prayers. Lord, give us the enabling and the strength to pray. Amen. Let's return to our text this morning, taken from Matthew chapter 17. Just want to quickly pick on the last verse of that text, which is um, 21, verse 21, the last verse of our reading text. Matthew 17, 14 through to 21. So I'm just picking the Last verse. I'll bait. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Jesus Christ was saying here that even if you believe that nothing shall be impossible unto you, I'll bait. That's a very good conjunction. Connecting verse 21 to all that Jesus was saying from verse 14, where we started from. With all of this, Jesus Christ is saying, you have your part to play. And that part is prayer and fasting. We believe prayer and fasting are Bible doctrines. We preach on them, we teach on them, and we practice them. And we have been reaping the rich benefits it is true, admittedly, that we don't talk too much every time about fasting, 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 as we do with prayers. But nonetheless, fasting 
is an integral part of what God expects of his children. So I want to pray that today, God himself will teach me, Amen. will teach you Amen. what is meant by true fast combined with prayer in order to get a fantastic result. When we set time apart to pray, that time that we have set apart to pray is already a fasting period. It may be for one hour, maybe for two hours, maybe for um, one month, maybe for three months. The time that you just decided you want to set apart to pray, that is part of fasting. And it is good that we remember that and that we do that. It is also important that we do this individually and occasionally when the Spirit leads us, we do call or encourage even corporate prayers combined with fasting, even by the grace of God as we've been doing now. And we all have witnesses within us that the Lord has been blessing us in the past. Amen. The value, power, blessing, and result of this combination is inestimable. No wonder Jesus said to his disciples, this kind, this particular kind, remember the disciples came to him, we, 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 we tried to help this lunatic, but we could not. And immediately you said if you bring him to you, you just did it. Of course we know you are Christ, but why can't we? What's wrong with us? Of course they were rebuked for their unbelief, and then he explained to them that if they have faith, nothing shall be impossible. I'll be it. I'll be it. You still need to pray and fast. If there is anyone here that is being troubled by the devil, you want the devil to be rebuked, and you want him to depart, try fasting and prayer. You want that departure to be that very hour when you call upon the Lord, try fasting and prayer. Try to shut yourself with the Lord alone and say, God is going to be you and me today and see what the Lord would do. What a privilege we have. During this special time, we are praying that all our so-called this kind, which I have in my life, which I believe you have yours, yes. in the name of Jesus, yes. because we are going to apply yes. true fasting, yes. true prayer, yes. in the name of Jesus, yes. even as this lunatic was set free, yes. we shall be set free, yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. We pray that the Lord will pour out the spirit of prayer Amen. and supplication. Amen. Prayer is powerful. Yes. Prayer is just too great. Yes. What is prayer? It was first mentioned in the Bible, actually, in the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 26, when um, Adam, the great-grandchild of Adam, was born by name Enos. Um, if you trace from that time, we are told that men began to call upon the name of the Lord. And since that time, up till now, prayer has been an effective tool of connecting to God, Amen. of getting things from God. Amen. Prayer is the breath of the life of a Christian. Prayer is the supply line of the soul's necessary daily food. Prayer is the means by which we can keep in vital contact with God. Prayer is a sure shield against sin. Prayer is the source of power to resist the devil. Prayer gives power to serve God as we ought to serve him. Prayer is communication with God. Prayer is the thing that will get us ready and keep us ready for the rapture. No wonder devil hates it. Have you ever noticed that if it comes to engaging a friend, you can give too much time to that? Have you ever noticed that you can be engaged in casual discussion 
with anybody for hours and you are not tired? Have you ever noticed that when now you want to talk to God, after about 5, 10, 15 minutes, you are tired? Devil hates prayer. And he will do everything possible to make sure that you don't pray. I don't pray. But in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Prayer is work, you know. Yeah. I'm talking of serious prayer. Yeah. I'm talking of people that really wants to get results. We are not talking of people that are taking prayer to mean routine. We are not talking of people that say, they say we should pray, let's pray. No. We are talking of people that know the meaning of prayer. Yeah. It's a great work. Yeah. And if you determine to do that work, Satan, you just get on your knees. It has been said that when Satan sees a Christian, a true child of God, on his knees, he knows he's already defeated anyway. Because God is going to answer that prayer. When prayer is severed, when, prayer, when one separates oneself from prayer, that soul dies. As we often say, a prayerless Christian is a powerless and when something is powerless, of what use is that thing is? And no wonder the disciples, they called upon Jesus in Luke 11. 1. Teach us to pray. Help us, O oh Lord. We too want to pray. That is our prayer today. Amen. That the Spirit of God from heaven will come down. Amen. Even if you know, you know it so well. How to communicate with God. I can still uh, 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 challenge you yes. that today God can still teach you. Yes. God can still show you yes. how to pray. Yes. And we pray that the Lord will do that for us. Yes. Is it not something tremendous? Is it not something wonderful? A, a kind of a thought that man can actually prevail with God? You don't do that by engaging in any physical thing. You don't do that by just playing around. You do that when you pray. Is it not a tremendous thought that God can be influenced? That God is sitting down, we just raise, us, raise up his hand. Because of prayer. Is it not uh, something wonderful that God, as we have read in the Bible, can repent that this change is mind? God can change his mind. Yes. Is that not wonderful? Yes. That God can just decide, I'm changing my mind. I'm changing my mind. I will not do that thing again that I've planned to do. Only when we pray and we make supplications. We've just sang this morning, prayer is the master key. You know that master key, we open every door that God has decreed and declared should be opened in your life and in my life. Prayer will be the master key that we open that door and the enemy cannot do anything about it. And that is now available to you. Now available to me. Aren't we glad? Shouldn't we be encouraged? The power of prayer. Prayer changes things. Try it. Jesus Christ himself instructed, ask. Matthew 7, 7. Ask. Seek. Knock. And all of this, God will answer. Amen. It can be very simple, but I tell you, it works. Yes. As we are talking about prayer, let's quickly remember a, 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 a factor, which I called determination value when we look at prayer. What happens if our prayers are not answered right away? Does it mean prayer is powerless? Does it mean God doesn't answer prayer? Does it mean that prayer is useless? Of course not. Of course not. Prayer that is offered with determination, God will see it. With determination, with earnestness, with enthusiasm, with importunity, with purpose, with faith, with perseverance, God will see it. Amen. God will answer. Amen. God has his own timetable. Yeah. I just pray God himself will teach you and I. I. I'm like you. We are the same. The ground is level 
in front of this cross of Christ, we are all praying to God that he will give us that earnestness that we just want to hold on, hold on, hold on. What we hold on, what we wait on God for, when we get it, we value it more than anything. He answers prayers that will not let go. Like that of Abraham, you remember? When he prayed for Sodom and Gomorrah, that God should deliver Lot. Did, did God not answer? He started from 50, 40, 30, 20. He was just bringing it down. The Bible did not tell us how long he stayed on that for. But it's like, God, you must answer my prayer. God, you must do this for me. Oh, yes, I have Lord there and his family. They must not be destroyed. God, you must do something. And God answered. How about the one that is still not let go, like the one we had so many of these during the course of our prayer meeting during the week. Jacob's, Jacob returning home and was telling God, I will not let you go. I will not let you go. How can God not answer such a prayer? God, you have said it, and I will not let you go unless you bless me, unless you answer my prayer. God will answer such prayer. He answered Jacob, the one that will not be put off. You remember the case of that Syrophoenician woman? Beseeching Jesus, and it was like, I, I, I don't have anything to do with you. you I'm, I'm not for you. Oh, you are not for me? Well, even if you are not for me, I still I can still get connection. I know you can still have mercy upon me. Even that which is coming under the table, the dogs. So consider me to be a dog. Prayer that we not, you can't put off. You just want something from the Lord. Of the one of importunity, like that friend that Jesus Christ described in the Bible about knocking on the door. No, 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 no. Even if you are sleeping, you must open this door. You must open. I have visitor, and they must eat. And I know you have the food. Open for me. The one that we plead to God to change his mind about what even God himself has said. Yeah. Do you remember the case of Ezekiel? Yeah? Yeah. Message went to Ezekiel yeah? from God. You are, get yourself ready. Yeah. You are going to die. And the Bible tells us that Ezekiel, yeah, he wasn't complaining. He decided to pray. You see the power of prayer? Yeah. And God immediately Amen. changed his mind. Yeah. I don't know what the enemy has been telling you or, or even what you yourself you know in terms of what you are going through, in terms of what the word of God has even told you that as a result, as a consequence of this thing you are doing, this is your Lord by the grace of God. Amen. Today, Amen. if you will pray, Amen. God will change his mind. Amen. God will turn the table around in the name of Jesus. As we come to pray, let us have that determination value to receive. It's not a routine. And don't forget, you know, it's not how long. We talk about pray through here. We don't pray around something. We pray through it. We pray through it. We get through it. And that doesn't, it doesn't need to take hours. It may not take many days. More especially if you remember the case of uh, this young man called Jabez in the book of First Chronicles. Remember First Chronicles? Chapter 4, verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Amen. How long did that prayer take for heaven to respond? Immediately. So don't, don't worry. I can't pray for 30 minutes. I can't pray for one hour. Who is asking you to? Who is giving you the ultimatum? Who is giving you the duration? You just want to get down on your knees. You just yeah. want to call upon God. Amen. Leave the duration to God and whatever God wants to do, God can answer just like that yes. as he answered Jabez. You remember the prayer of that publican in Luke um, 18, 13? That publican just said, God, be merciful to me. You can count the number of words of that prayer. 
And the Bible says that that man went home justified. If you leave the church justified, what else do you want? God answered his prayer. And God will answer your prayer too. And that is today. We are not talking of tomorrow. The dying thief, even as we sang, remember me when you get to your kingdom. And immediately, do you see the earnestness in prayer? So it's not the question of I'm weak. I can't pray all this uh, one hour, two hour, 30 minutes. Nobody is giving you that. You just want to mean it from the bottom of your heart. Remember me, O Lord, and the Lord will answer your prayer. Amen. The posture, it is true. When we are in the house of the Lord, we thank God for these altar benches. Yes, Make use of them. Yeah. Don't despise them. Yeah. Try to find a place there. That's why every time we conduct prayers, or at the end of our service, we encourage people, come forward. And of course, if you cannot find a place, there are no problem. You can be wherever you want to be, but make it a point of duty in your heart. I'm going to the altar. I'm going to call upon the Lord on the altar of prayer. The, the, the posture doesn't matter. You, you know what is wrong with you. We have seen people many times, they stand up. Some people, of course, the right posture when we come before the Lord really is to kneel down. But if for any reason you cannot do that, it doesn't matter. All these people that we are reading about, their, their location and their posture, does it matter? No. And God answered their prayers. Yes. God is going to answer your prayers too. Amen. God answers prayers. Yes. When now all these are combined with fasting, miracles follow. Amen. With true fasting, what is fasting? And I'm not talking of dietary control here. Neither am I talking of I want to reduce weight. And there is nothing wrong with all of those. Um, actually, in part of the um, thing that I read before now, not that I'm overweight, but I, um, a part of dietary control that um, they, they, they have prescribed for me that I need uh, um, to be healthy, and that is um, um, intermittent fasting. There's nothing wrong in that. I read about it and I love it. But the one I'm talking about now is biblical fasting. Yeah. I'm talking of religious fasting. Yeah. I'm talking of the one that is not, it has got nothing to do with fat reduction. It has got nothing to do with any other thing other than for you to just be with the Lord. Yeah. Fasting, to abstain from for a while, and it's something personal, decision, from all physical nourishment, food inclusive, does not necessarily need to just be, well, when this thing was given to me, and I saw this from Rabbi Oladendi, and I said, okay, this looks nice, empty plate, and the cutlery there, and nothing there, I just want to pray, that's nice. But then I was thinking, there are some people, they don't like food normally anyway. They can do without food for a few days. Is that fasting? No. Of course not. We are, we are talking here of self-denial. We are talking here of giving up some lawful pleasures. We are talking here of making a conscious decision to deny yourself, to humble your soul. Fasting is a spiritual discipline. And actually, fasting is feasting with God. Have you ever fasted? Have you ever fasted? You will find yourself feasting with God. It's a spiritual discipline. Fasting crucifies the appetites and manifests earnestness before God. All believers, you won't go long in your journey as a true child of God before you know personally. Nobody needs to tell you that you need to deny yourself. Some things that are just physical, you just want to throw them aside. I just want to shut myself in with God and with God alone. And God will answer your prayer. Amen. There are no set rules. Some people will say, how long? How often? This is left to each individual, according to your burdens, according to your needs, according to individual needs, and of course, whatever the Spirit is uh, putting upon your heart to do. We don't just fast for his sake. True fast must be accompanied by prayer. True fast must be accompanied by confession, by mourning, by humility, and whatever the Spirit of God is asking you to separate yourself from, that is between you and God. True fast. Well, 
Let's be careful here of hypocritical fast. Show off fast. That's what uh, Jesus Christ was telling um, the hypocrites of his day in Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 to 18, when he was telling them about a sad countenance. Um, wearing something, wearing black, just to show people, mm, what's the matter? I'm fasting today. He said, that is hypocrisy. You just want to show off. Let people know that, oh, well, I'm serving God because when you fast, that is what something may consider as um, um, serving God. And also, we must be careful of mock fast to cover up sin and disobedience. We will have this in, let's go to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58. Isaiah, chapter 58. Ah, this is uh, some people asking God, wherefore have we fasted, they say, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast, aha, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. This is very important. We are talking here of true fast. It's in the Bible. It's in the word. Read it and do it. True fast. If you do that, you are just mocking. We will return to that chapter later. You can put your finger there. Another fast that you want to be sure you, you guide against is the one that is called foolish fasting, where you bind yourself with foolish vow. You remember those people, about 40 or so of them, that bind themselves, we are not going to eat until we kill Paul. What a fast. No food, no drink. We must kill Paul. Act 23, 12. We must kill him. And we, we fast to do so. When, when we kill him, then we break our fast. God will not accept such fasts. No. That is something of the devil. Yes, sir. But there is true fast. Yes. There is real fast. Yes. The one that God will look down from heaven and he will see and he will do something about it. The fast with God accepts. Don't endanger your health. Be sure that that fast causes you self-denial. You know what I mean? It makes you to leave your comfort zone. It makes you to really be that your mind and your life and everything is now with God. Whatever then you need to deny yourself of, God will let you know you know those things that you are doing. I must say that I like food. And maybe many people do. So part of my own fasting is to do away with food and drinks. Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't just say fasting means do away with food and drinks when you know I don't like food anyway. No problem for me. I can fast 10 days. I can fast 5 days. That, that, that is unacceptable to God. Deny yourself. That thing that you know, this body... That thing that can just get on the way when you want to talk to God, you want to put it aside. I don't want to have anything to do with that. The fast that God accepts, you don't think because you are fasting that you are better than those who don't. So don't think I, I, I fast and others they don't. You're, you're already finished. Your fast is already finished. You don't fast to compete. Let's see how many days you can go. Let's see how many days I can go without water or without food. That's not the one God will accept. We don't fast for competition. It's not an exercise of self-control. I want to see how much I can control myself. Because that is where all your mind will be when you are fasting. But fasting, true fasting has got nothing to do with that. True fasting is you and God shut together. You shut yourself up together with God in whatever way the Lord will want you to, to, to do that. True fasting. It is not to manipulate the hand of God. You don't use fasting as a weapon. What you know the Lord has said no, and which is for your own good. You are just want to turn his hand anyhow. Don't, don't continue to punish yourself. But we know in the word of God that those who have been great men of prayer 
have always have all also have been people that fasted much, that have denied themselves through fasting. Let's return to the book of Isaiah, 58, verse 6. Now let's start from verse 4. Behold, ye fast for strife. And debate, and to smile with the feast of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day. Make your, to, be, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Would thou call this a fast, an, an acceptable day to the Lord? Saying you set a day aside to do all those things. He said, is that the kind of fast that I want? Now, true fasting. Verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness? Stop exercising any unjust and cruel authority over others. Unjust, cruel authority. That can be at home. That can be at work. That can be in the church. That can be anywhere. True fasting. Undo heavy burdens. Release of captives. Those in slavery. Those in usury. That is true fasting. Let your prayers go free. Stop harassing people. Stop persecuting people. That's what the word of God is saying here. To oppress, to treat others with violence. God is saying you can fast 20, 40 days. Not eating, deny yourself this and that, but if you are an oppressor, that fasting is not acceptable to God. Stop it! Violent attitude. Free those who are broken. Those who are broken. To be oppressed means to be broken. Free them. Deliverance from servitude. That is true fasting. May God teach you and I. True fasting. When we do that, and we are eating our four times or five times a day, this is the fasting. This is the fasting. May God write that in your heart. Amen. May God write that in my heart. Amen. We need to have that true fasting. As I said, those who have uh, 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 made great impact in their life are those who have prayed and fasted much. We have many examples. Do you need to hear from God? Do you remember Moses? For 40 days and nights, he stayed with God. The Bible tells us, no food, no drink for 40 days because he wanted to hear from God. And at the end of that, what did Moses get? The tables of stone. Yeah. Having talked to God, having been with the Lord. Are you seeking Christian experiences? Do what Cornelius did. You remember the case of Cornelius? On that particular occasion in the book of Acts, chapter 10, on that particular occasion, the Bible tells us that he was praying and fasting for four days. Four days. I don't know whether he gave himself time, or maybe he was just continually fasting and praying before the answer came, and then the answer came. Are you stagnant, and you cannot control yourself? You cannot discern between good and bad? Try fasting and prayer. Call upon God and see what the Lord will do. How about you have been promised something by God and you are waiting for its fulfillment? You want to do what Daniel did in Daniel chapter 9 verse 3. Daniel knew that the 70 years that God has said that the children of Israel will be in captivity was about to expire. And he knew too that they can do something to still turn the mind of God that God can still do more in terms of judgment 
What did he do? He decided, I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. And he did. And God answered his prayer. Amen. Are you afraid? Remember Ezra. I think it's good we turn to that of Ezra. Let's turn to that of Ezra in terms of being afraid. Ezra chapter 8 from verse 21 says, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Hahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. 22, for I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way. Because, note this, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, the hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this. And he was entreated of all. Have you given your testimony? Have you been uh, saying something about God? My God is real. My God is this. My God is that. And now the situation comes. That the same people you are saying, my God. Is a provider. My God is the one that answers prayers. They are not the one you are going to to answer your prayer. Turn to fasting and prayer. That's what Ezra caused these people to do. Look at verse 31. Then we departed from the river of Ahava after they have done what they wanted to do. On the twelfth day of the first month to go unto Jerusalem and the hand of our God was upon us. And he delivered us from the hand of the enemy Amen. and of such as lay in wait by the way. Yeah. And we came to Jerusalem and abode there three days. Amen. They have been released from the captivity in Babylon. Amen. And they didn't want to tell the king, give us band to help us. They have told the king, our God is great. Yeah. Our God is powerful. Amen. So instead of going to the king, let's go to God. Yeah. Let's afflict our soul and say, God, we have testified about you. We have said you are this, you are that. You have, de- you have to deliver us. Yes. We are not going to seek the help of man. Yeah. We will seek your help. Amen. You must do something. Amen. You must deliver us. Amen. You must protect us. Amen. We are journeying into Jerusalem. Yes. And you have to see us through to Jerusalem. Yes. They go to Jerusalem. Yes. God will take you too. Yes. To your heavenly Jerusalem. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Right, fasting and prayer. Yes. Challenge yourself. If you are in danger, you remember Esther. You know the wrath of man is everywhere. The harassment of man is everywhere. Esther was harassed. What did Esther say? Three days. Join me in three days fasting and prayer. I know my God. That if we pray and fast to him, he will do something. Didn't you know the story? What God did for Esther and Mordecai and then Haman that wanted to kill them, he killed himself eventually. And they took his place. You know this fasting and prayer thing? I just pray that God himself. It's not something that somebody wants to be teaching someone. It has to be between you and God. Prepare for special assignment. We have many examples in the, many examples in the Bible. When um, uh, uh, the, 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 um, even Jesus Christ himself preparing him for that special assignment that was before him, and he was led of the Spirit into the wilderness, and he fasted for 40 days, and he was there. And in the end of that, what does the Bible say? Devil left him. Devil will leave you too. Yeah. Devil will leave me alone. Yeah. He will leave all of us yeah. if we would try fasting and prayer. Yeah. And we do it the way it should be done. Yes. We will see all these results will be ours in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have something here in case you don't know. The birth of this church, Apostolic Faith Church, was through fasting and prayer. Do you know that? The birth of the Apostolic Faith Church, this church that you and I are enjoying, was birth. Giving birth to as a result of Prayer and fasting. Let me read it to you. Let me read it to you. In early 1906, Simor was invited to help pastor 
in a holiness church in LA where he continued to expand upon the Pentecostal doctrine using Acts 2.4 as his text. When the church where he was assisting rejected that message and locked him out of the building, Simon received an invitation to stay at a home where he was encouraged to hold prayer meetings. He was also invited to prayer meetings held in a home at 214 Bonnybrae Street where a group of people met to pray for revival. At the end of March, Seymour called for a 10-day tarring meeting. On April 9, after 10 days of prayer and fasting, several received the Holy Spirit Amen. with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It was in this prayer meeting, it was in the revival that happened at Azusa Street that the founder of our church, Mother Florence Crawford, was present, was part of that revival. And actually in that building where they prayed, the name we are bearing today, they decided to call that building the Apostolic Faith Mission. In that same building where the Spirit of God came down as a result of 10 days of prayer and fasting. Imagine since 1906, this is 2019, your children, our children, and by the grace of God, our children's children, they will continue to enjoy the result of fasting and prayer. Why would you then want to take yourself out of that? Why don't you want to see that as something that I must practice? Why don't you want to see something that I must do? Why don't why, why would you want to see that as something foreign? It was a um, leader that said the soul that will live close to Jesus yeah. is he who spent much time yeah. in prayer. And he said, although it may not always please us, it is only that which relieves us from care. Yeah. The Savior yeah. is not looking for prevailers. Yeah. And he's saying, will you join yeah. this band of availers. And to motivate you to join, let's finish up that Isaiah from verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth Amen. as the morning, Amen. and thy health shall spring forth speedily. Amen. Isaiah 58 from verse 8. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. Amen. The glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward. Amen. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Amen. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make far thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose water fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Amen. Thou shalt raise up the foundation of many generations. Amen. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Do you feel a tug in your heart to call upon the Lord? The altars are open. I'm asking you to come. Come and call upon the Lord. Come and tell God, teach me how to pray. Amen. Lord, please have mercy upon my soul. Amen. Lord, please have mercy upon me. Amen. Do it for me, O oh Lord. As we sing the closing song, you are invited to pray and the Lord will answer your prayers. Amen.
thank you, dear Lord, for this challenge. And thank you for the assurance that when we call upon thee, you will answer us. All the places, all the spots where our testimonies have been challenged, today, Lord God, we take the victory in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not recount on our testimonies. Lord, we have said and we stand by it that you are a miracle-working God, that you will save our children, that you will heal our illnesses, that you will restore peace in our homes, that you give us those jobs that are lost, that Lord, you provide for all our needs. Lord, we stand here. We remain on your promises, O oh God, and we claim them again today. We decree that they shall be fulfilled in our lives because we will pray. And Lord, we will fast and you will answer. Save today, O oh Lord. Sanctify and baptize with Holy Ghost and fire and be glorified, O oh God. Send us home with joy and rejoicing. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.